Hello and welcome to Geography 142. This is the introduction to human geography for winter 2019. My name is Lynn Songer. I'm the instructor for this course and I want to go over the syllabus with you, some general interface in uh, for using Moodle and some expectations and some uh, um, ideas for having a successful term. So I have a copy of the syllabus as a PDF open. And my just kind of go over some of the, the general stuff at the beginning of this, and I hope you'll read through this. Uh, I'm going to go over it rather briefly. Uh, this is a four credit class, um, and my office hours are in the center building. My office is in the center building in 410H, but I'm also found in 455, so all on the fourth floor. Uh, the GIS lab is where I hang out uh, more often. Officially, uh, Monday and Wednesday, except for this Monday, the first Monday of the term, I'll be gone. But Monday and Wednesday from 9 to 10, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, 2 to 3, and then uh, by appointment on Fridays. Now, I'm required to give you my Lane email. However, this is not the best way to reach me. The best way is to use the Moodle message uh, system, and we'll go over that a little bit more. So uh, Intro to Human Geography is a, uh, a survey course that covers all of the subtopics sub or sub uh, disciplines in human geography. So we're going to talk about, you know, geography as a discipline, and then we'll look at uh, types of culture, folk culture versus indigenous cultures versus population or popular cultures. Then we'll talk about population geography, demographics, how they change uh, when we look at the, in the entire world. We'll spend a little bit of time on uh, religious uh, differences across the globe, ethnicity and migration, political geography, uh, economic geography, and then finish up with urbanization. And so because this is a survey course or an intro course, there's a huge focus on just the general concepts and ideas that are covered in geography and the terminology that's used in this discipline. So there's going to be a need for some memorizing uh, different terms and, and topics. It's a little bit like learning a language sometimes. In general, what you want, I want you to be able to do is to use the geographic terms to uh, discuss uh, the topic, so answer questions using these terms. Uh, when we talk about diffusion, um, don't say uh, things moved from one place to another. You can talk about ideas diffused from one place to another, and, and you'll have an idea in a bit what that means. We're going to really focus on how do we look at things with a spatial perspective. Um, and so to do that, we're going to be making a lot of online maps and evaluating online maps. You're going to collect and display geographic information, geographic data, uh, using a web-based mapping platform and publication software. Um, and then be thinking about how is geography used uh, in the real world to solve problems, make predictions, understand places. There is no text to purchase for this class. Um, the readings are provided as a PDF, uh, and then you will also need to get a subscription to the New York Times online. And in the, uh, the Moodle interface, there is a PDF that tells you how to uh, get on Lane's library page and uh, subscribe to the New York Times. Again, uh, don't contact me through Lane email. I just uh, don't check that very often. And uh, so it could be a week before I answer you. So if you want to be assured of a quick response, you need to message me through Moodle. I check Moodle often. Uh, except probably, you know, Friday afternoons, I sort of sign off, and I may check in again on Sunday, but you can't count on that. But during the week, I check it a lot. And so that's something to remember, that if you sent me a Moodle message and I don't respond within 24 hours, 
something's wrong with Moodle. And we had some issues last year where some Moodle messages kind of disappeared and never got through. So if you don't hear back from me, that's highly unusual. And so resend that. Um, again, most your quizzes are due on Friday. Your assignments are due on Sunday. So if you wait until Friday afternoon to start the work, I'm not going to be able to help you if you get into trouble. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about kind of a, a plan for uh, going through the content that would, uh, I think, be helpful for you to be successful in the class. Uh, just a note about um, just good email uh, communication tips. One is um, just to make sure you use a greeting and a closing. Hi, this is Joe. Hi, this is Mary. Morning, Lynn. Uh, and thanks at the end or whatever. Uh, and try to avoid sarcasm. If you're angry, if you're frustrated, um, that doesn't read well um, on um, email. It's really hard to kind of tell. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, but apparently, even cute jokes don't seem to work well on, you can't see somebody's face, so it makes it hard. You need to include your name and the class. So, for example, good morning, I'm in Geography 142, thanks, so-and-so. If you don't tell me which class you're in, I'm going to email back and say, could you please tell me which class you're in, and then you're going to be three hours late getting your response back to me. I have a hundred and some students, three different classes, and I'm not going to try to figure out which class you're in. So you need to make sure you provide me with that information. If you have a question, be really specific. Um, I've gotten a lot of people who say, I had a trouble with one of the questions on, on quiz three. And I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just not going to be able to help with that. So if you say, you know, quiz three, question four, I thought the answer should be blah, 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 um, but you counted that wrong. Can you help me understand? Uh, then I can go in and I can look at yours and I can say, you know, I think you're right or, or here's why you're not right. Anyway, or here's a better answer. This class is going to use technology, which is, should be no surprise because you're taking it online. And um, but we're also going to be using a web mapping software. So the program is, is uh, web-based. It runs on a Mac, PC, or Chromebook. You don't have to download anything. Uh, but it does require a pretty good internet connection because you will be pulling images from the cloud. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. If you are using dial-up, I would suggest that this class is not going to work for you unless you can find a place to work. You can work in the library. You can come into the GIS lab during our open hours, which I'll post later, um, and you can use the computers here. Uh, you cannot complete this using a cell phone. I had a couple students last year try to work, and uh, so if, if you are limited to a cell phone only, I would recommend that you find a different online class because this is not going to work and you're not going to be able to get all of the work done that you need to do. So I have uh, created several uh, 20 to 50 minute lectures that are uh, basically just a voiced over PowerPoint that I use in my face-to-face -face lectures. Uh, I've uh, provided you with a PDF uh, note-taking page that goes along with that that may be helpful. Uh, there is a study guide each week. We'll look at the we'll look at one of the weeks here in a minute and go over that. So, um, it, as a four-credit class, you would be expected to spend I think three hours and fifty minutes in class. So then with another three hours minimum outside of class, you should be able to spend about seven hours on this class to, to be able to get a passing grade. Um, the, the content that I provide is probably not three hours. Um, so uh, maybe two and a half when we look at the PowerPoints and all of the smaller videos that I provide. So if you uh, 
were to fill in all of the study guides and the questions, I would say you're probably at a good four hours, and then you need to figure out what's the best way for you to really integrate that material for yourself. Um, there are uh, a total of 280 points possible for this course. I will calculate your percentage based on 300, and, did I say 280? 380. Uh, based on 370 points, and that basically lets you miss one quiz or assignment without a penalty. And then if you don't miss any, it's just a little extra credit for you. Um, a pass, no pass in this course is uh, a pass is 69.5% or better, and a no pass is anything less than 69.5%. There are two exams, one in week five that covers the first four weeks of material and um, opens Saturday through Wednesday. If you don't take the exam and you get sick on Wednesday, I will need a bona fide doctor's uh, um, note that you were you were in the hospital or sick from Saturday through Wednesday. Um, there's plenty of time for you to schedule and take that exam. So uh, if you miss the exam um, because you waited to the last minute and something came up, that's just going to be pretty horrific. Uh, exam two is cumulative. Again, uh, it will open Saturday before finals week and close on Wednesday. Uh, and so if you're sick, you need to have some doctor's note that says you were sick all days that it was open. So don't wait to the last minute. Um, the exams are not open note. They are not open book. You can take them in the Lane Testing Lab here on main campus or in the testing sites in Florence and Cottage Grove. If you can't come to one of these sites, you can arrange a proctor. Um, here is the link for the proctor. There's a process you need to go through. It has to meet certain criteria. And then um, I'm contacted. So you need to get on that early. I need to have that information by week three so that I can contact your proctor and arrange by the end of week three. So that in week four, I can contact your proctor, make sure that everything's working and the exam is ready and open for you. If you're taking uh, the exam at the Lane campus, you need to check uh, when the hours are. And if you're taking it at Florence and Cottage Grove, uh, call them to make sure you know what they need for you to uh, bring to the exam. I do not accept any late work. Um, and so the uh, best practice here is you need to open the quiz. If you wait until Friday at 11 o'clock and you forgot to take the quiz, open it anyway. Because if you don't open the quiz, you can't look at it later. And those questions will be really helpful for you in studying for the exam. So here is the weekly plan. Um, it's pretty redundant from one week to the other. And um, I think I'm going to move from here over to uh, the actual Moodle site. OK, so when you open Moodle, I find all of these extra things on the left take over my um, real estate. So if I do that, I have a little bit more room to see things. So I close all of those and they're just stacked over on the left of my window. Depending on the browser you use, uh, this may look, I'm right now I'm in, uh, I think I, yeah, I'm in Firefox. Uh, if I were in Chrome, this might look a little different. If I were in Safari, uh, one of the other things is that the videos, that the video links, uh, most of them are um, YouTube videos, but many of those links will work or not work depending on which browser you're using. So I have all four browsers on my PC available. And if I open a video and it doesn't work in one, I will go to another browser and try that. OK, the announcement news form. I would check this two or three times a week. Uh, I put up important announcements here. Uh, I may put up a reminder. I may put up a correction um, if I get uh, five or six people asking the same question, I may make an announcement here. Some people 
get a notice that there's an announcement. Some people don't. I have no control over whether you get them or not. So make that uh, something that you check on a regular basis. Uh, the syllabus is here. Here's the link for getting the New York Times. I have a page for using Moodle um, if you want to change your preferences, if you want to send a message, how to take a quiz, review the quiz. Um, if you want to upload assignments, I think in this class we are not uh, uploading assignments, we're uploading text. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. And I want to switch my role to a student so that you are seeing what I'm seeing. Here we go. Okay, so there we go. We're back to this. Um, okay, so week one. What What is it going to look like? Oh, one other thing. I have added a Excel document called a scorekeeper because the grade system in Moodle is not that reliable and um, calculates grades in a way that's pretty confusing for students. So uh, here is uh, the total possible points, 380. If you got all 380 points, you would actually have a score of 102.7%. So what you can do with this is you can add your own points. So if you get a five on the first quiz, and an 8 on the next assignment, and a 7. This will add your points up as you go. Um, and so you can keep track of your own work and have uh, a better, oh, 888 extra credit points. That would be awesome. Um, you have to write a textbook for that. OK, so I just add this. I don't find the Moodle grade thing very helpful. Um, and I don't, yeah, if you open your grader, well, because this is, there's nothing to look at in this one, so forget that idea. Okay. All right, so week one. So here is the plan, and this is what I would do were I taking this course. Uh, first, I would open up the study guide. So you can see that there's a lecture. Uh, I don't know. Some of these pop up as an insight, inset. Some of them don't. I do not know why. Uh, I prefer not to look at this in um, Moodle. I would click this and then go into YouTube to watch it because it's a little bit bigger. And if you want, you can turn on the captions. Okay, so I find that Okay, stop. Hello. You can stop now. This one, you should be able to just click it, and it may launch YouTube automatically. Again, if you want closed captioning, um, that may help. Okay, there we go. Um, this is the video Lily. This is a sense of place. So these are some videos that I want you to watch. There are two readings in the folder. We'll get to those. But here's kind of the meat. So I would copy all of this information. And in Moodle, you have to do keystrokes to copy. So Control-C for copy. Open up a Word document. Control-V to paste. And now I have a Word document that I can actually fill in. Um, and then when I take the quiz, I've got something that I could use uh, to help me with that quiz. Or some of these essay questions for the quiz are, ex are directly from the study guide. You could copy and paste your answers into the quiz. So that would be one thing I would do. I would copy that down uh, so that I have this available as I watch the videos. The other thing that hopefully is helpful is in the reading, there is a PDF. Oh, it's going there. That you can print out 
and take notes as I go through the PowerPoint. I'm, I'm in week two now. Let's go back to week one. There. Okay, so there's the notes for week one. There you go. So you would have some notes, uh, note pages that I think would be helpful. And then you would have this and this to kind of focus your studying and, and have available when you take the weekly quiz. So the quiz is um, one shot only. Um, you have one hour to take the quiz. Um, and as I said, if you don't think you have time, at least attempt the quiz. And then uh, you can finish the quiz and get out of there. Look at that. You got to see some answers. There we go. OK, uh, the assignment here. This is the assignment link, and on, inside that link, here is the weekly assignment. And the assignment is a step-by-step -step tutorial using this uh, web-based software, and I have provided um, some little video links uh, that hopefully will help you if you're stuck. Um, and if this is really challenging for you, come see me the first week and we can go over this. Um, this, this program is used in fifth grade classes and so if you're having trouble with this, it may just be that my instructions aren't helpful. And if you come in, uh, once you figure out what I'm looking for and how to do it, it becomes pretty simple. So it's very doable. Um, and the first week's assignment, you go back and open that again, is this is my example. Of the story map. So each week you are going to add um, a new tab with information um, that will uh, address one of the topics that we're, we're talking about. So we're going to start out with just an introduction. So since I have this story map out, let's take a look at some of my scoring criterion here. So when you're doing research uh, or using information from the internet, you need to cite your work. This is a college class and citations are required. Otherwise, without a citation, the, the assumption is plagiarism. So if you do not cite your work, I will have to enter a grade of zero and if the site is not correct. So for some reason, uh, many students have gotten the idea that just providing a link is a citation and it's not. You need uh, the entire citation, uh, which is the name of the page, the date, the name of the image, for example, in this one, when you access that image, and then the proper uh, URL or assessment for that. Now, sometimes this piece is not available. And if it's not, you just put in an NA. For the first assignment, if you're using your own photo, you can say photo from private collection and put the year. Okay, so you'll see here on my example, I have image from Wikipedia, May 2018, Lake Connaught, accessed from, and then the link. And again, uh, there is there's that. We'll talk more about insight in-text citations as we begin to do some uh, review of research in the other uh, projects. For the quizzes, 
The quizzes are, again, open note, open book. They are timed. I think all of them have a 60-minute time limit. Um, there are a mix of multiple choice, fill in the term, and some short essay. Uh, so the essays, I'm looking for a complete, oops, a complete discussion. Uh, so if you use one sentence for most essay questions, you can be assured of not getting any points because an essay is not one sentence. So one sentence might be a short answer. Uh, or a fill in the term kind of thing. Um, most of the questions will come directly from the study guide. If you answer them, you can copy and paste them into Moodle. Um, so again, uh, the study guides are your best friend. And, and if you have a Mac, um, again, I think the, the copy paste into Moodle is uh, using Command C to copy and then Command V to paste. So you need to do that. The assignments. Three points will come from your making the map. Um, so oh, where is that? I've got so many things up now. So here is this map uh, would have three points. One, because the map worked. Uh, the links were correct. I, I answered the questions that were supposed to be answered. Um, and uh, they're cited. So that would be that first three points. Uh, as we go through the term, you're going to be looking for data layers and you're going to be adding information. And then the bulk is going to come from your discussion. Um, did, you, did you discuss the map element? Did you use the terms that we uh, used in class? Um, can I tell that you understand it based on uh, on your information. And did you add some extra images or graphics that were helpful? Uh, uh, and then again, is your citation co complete? I do give extra credit uh, for um, uh, projects that are kind of over the top uh, that have, uh, you know, maybe an extra data element or they went a little further than needed or just a really well researched piece of information. So um, that should help you think about the um, grading of those. When you have finished the term, you will have a story map that has all of your work in a portfolio. So um, there is the introduction that I showed you earlier. Here is the second assignment that you're going to look at an article in the New York Times looking at folk and pop culture. Here is a third assignment where you're going to evaluate the demographics. Again, I have some data that I've put on that map. Uh, the fourth assignment is going to be looking at um, refugees and immigrants. The fifth assignment is a world religion assignment and persecution um, that you're going to uh, create. The sixth assignment is looking at uh, food and hunger and food insecurity. The seventh assignment, I think, oh yes, that's uh, looking at um, um, economics uh, in, in the world. And then uh, the eighth assignment was a political geography assignment. And then the ninth one was um, looking at urbanization and uh, slum cities. So you will be building this uh, portfolio of uh, mapping designs each week. And it's, uh, it's very exciting. You can't put it on the refrigerator, but it's, it's pretty cool. But we're just going to start with this one little link. So one of the things that you can see is we build the skills uh, throughout the term. So if you miss one of the assignments, uh, you almost have to go back to assignment two to be able to do assignment three as far as the, the mapping skills uh, are, are uh, considered. So these take maybe about an hour a week. So with about uh, two and a half hours of lecture time and then another hour with this, I think you would be in pretty good shape. 
All right, I'm going to close that. I'm going to close that. Anything else? Let's go back to this. If I forgot any, you know, those are all closed. Um, yeah, okay, so I think we have covered that. Um, make sure that you uh, check the forum, as I said. Come and see me early, early, early in the term and early, early, early in the week if you're struggling. Uh, bring your study materials. Bring, bring your filled in uh, PowerPoints. Bring your uh, filled in study guide. And let's go over that and see maybe where the disconnect is happening um, if you're having trouble. Oh, one last thing. In Moodle, when you do a quiz, if it's a fill in the term, so let's say uh, the answer for what kind of diffusion happens when people move from one place to the other, and you answer relocation diffusion, Moodle might be looking for just the word relocation. So once the quiz is open and you can see the answers, check your answer. And if you believe you have it right, m message me because Moodle is very limited. And if you were to uh, maybe type in a wrong letter or put in an extra word, it's going to count it wrong. And I can go back and correct that, but I need to know uh, I try to find them, but I don't always find them all. So let me know if you think your answer is right, especially with the fill in the blank. Um, those can be problematic. Anyway, have a great term. I hope I get to meet all of you. Um, and um, I, I'll see you uh, soon.